Hornady Critical Duty 357 SIG versus 357 Magnum. Both of these are a 135 grain flex lock bullet. So this would be a, a pretty interesting and fair test. Um, our 357 SIG is rated at 1225 feet per second. Our 357 Magnum is rated at 1275 feet per second. I'm using a four inch revolver here. I'm gonna compare that to a five inch semi-automatic pistol because overall size of the guns and the amount of you know bullet travel you get in those guns is pretty much spot on so this will be an interesting test i have another round of ammo here this federal it's like the 357b semi jacket a hollow point sitting here because i have a very specific test i want to do with this and the thing is a lot of people don't really understand what ammo like this was designed to do they think it was designed to expand really well in all situations and that's not necessarily how it was designed it was designed with that little plug in the front there but it has a higher antimony lead so it's a little bit harder of a lead it has a harder shell it has a, a band around the bullet core to act as a kind of like a mechanical bond and the whole point of something like that was so that we have kind of traditional hollow point expansion when we hit just regular flesh or we hit something covered in denim but then to have that bullet stay together as it goes through a hard barrier and a lot of bullets would not stay together the the bullet core would separate from the jacket it would fragment it wouldn't work really well so the point isn't to be able to get expansion through barriers is to be able to go through a barrier and stay together so i'm going to do a test kind of like that so i am going to go through the chronograph see what kind of velocity and accuracy i get at the same time and i am going to do my standard 10 percent clear ballistic test we're just going to go into plain clear ballistics to, to see our best possible outcome with that ammo to see how it performs in its best case scenario where we don't have anything in the way and then after that i'm going to put in a quarter inch medium density fiber ward after three inches of clear ballistics because this is kind of like a pectoral muscle and this is like hitting ribs or sternum that'll be more of like a real world test but to test that ammo i'm going to go through this piece of it's like a computer desktop shell this is very very hard metal it's very comparable to like a car door it's very very tough i actually stopped 38 special on two layers of this before so it's pretty tough metal so we're going to put that in front of the in front of the gel there to see you know what kind of hard barrier penetration and then regular penetration will get through that and i had the other 357 magnum there because i want to compare it to something that is not designed to go through barriers like that and being duty sized guns and being duty ammo i think the point of some of this ammo is sometimes they load it in such a way that it's going to be more accurate than typical so I'm gonna shoot at my steel at various distances also to see what kind of practical accuracy I can get. So let's get started with this test. I am about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. First up, we're gonna chronograph that 357 SIG. Rated at 1225 feet per second. I don't know the barrel length, but let's see what we get. No read. 1269, 1274, 1283, 1277, 1259. So just a little bit above rated velocity. Our 357 Magnum, interestingly enough, it is rated to an 8-inch barrel, which is not typical, but we're rated at 1275. So let's see what we actually get in my 4-inch revolver here. 1380, 1384, 1384, 1372, 1370. Nice, so that is very much full power, you know, traditional power range 357 Magnum. The recoil wasn't that bad at all, so it really is kind of designed perfectly for a gun of this size. It felt really nice. So let's hit our ballistics gel block first with just our plain gel and see what our best case scenario is, the best potential of that round, those bullets, and to see what we get. All right, let's see what our potential is of these rounds. 357 SIG, plain gel. All right. Let's hit it with the 357 Magnum. Let's go take a look.
All right, so we got similar performance except our 357 Magnum a little bit deeper. So that makes a lot of sense because, you know, I think with the type of lead alloy, it's going to expand probably to the same diameter, but you have a little more power on top of that. You're going to push a little deeper. It looks to be similar damage, but just a tad more with our 357 Magnum. So with our 357 Seg, we have a penetration of about 14 and a quarter inches, which is perfect. Now with our 357 Magnum, we got a penetration of about 16 and a quarter, which again, it's perfect. Um, you know, typically I think, uh, you know, higher end testing protocol, they want to see at least 15. So our 357 did a little bit better, but both of these are perfectly within the acceptable range and it looks like they're doing pretty well so let's put on our our barrier there and by the way behind this uh, metal barrier i also have four layers of denim just stuck to that and we'll put in our rib simulation as well and put this on and just kind of see what we get all right i backed up just a little bit for this and of course we want to run our control round one that is not designed to go through barriers it's you know a soft tip it was the old school load and let's just see what our old school load would do through this metal through denim and then through our MDF after going through three inches of clear ballistics. So here's our old school load here. <laughs> Let's try our uh, critical duty now. All right, so right above that, I'm going to run the 357 Magnum first. So it's real close to that other one so we can kind of compare it. So 357 Magnum, critical duty. All right, let's try 357 SIG. All right, 357 SIG to that same type of barrier here. All right, let's go take a look. All right, so here is our barrier stuck on the front here. We went through this thing, you know, no problem. We got nice clean holes actually through all of them, even our soft tip one there. And we have our MDF here. And we can see here, we went down here in the bottom with our 357 mag, our traditional one. Here's our critical duty, which actually looks a lot like the 357 SIG and 357 Magnum critical duty almost look like they're going sideways, but uh, what I'm seeing here would not indicate that at all. So what we're seeing here is that with our 357 Magnum with our just our traditional load here, we got, it looks like the bullet is really tore up pretty badly. Um, we did get adequate penetration of about 15 and a quarter inches and we got a good damage in there. But what we're seeing here is with our 357 mag and our 357 SIG critical duty, there's a difference here. And just like the plain gel test, we have more penetration with the Magnum. We're at about 21 inches, 21 and a quarter. And there is some nose deformation type of expansion going on. And that isn't actually that bad because when we're talking about going through something, like with our 357 mag soft point, it exploded more or less, it fell apart. Now, if you're gonna get something that's better to go through penetrating better, you're gonna look at something like hard cast or full metal jacket or solid copper. And stuff like that actually would penetrate a little too far. I've seen stuff like that. It'll just zip through everything. But the fact that we have just enough deformation to only be at 21 and a quarter inches is actually not bad. Our 357 SIG is at about 19 and three quarters, which really isn't over penetration at all, really. And we have really good damage in there. So what we're seeing is we're seeing a very consistent step up in penetration when we go through, you know, a little bit of that barrier, but it's very consistent and our, we did not lose our jacket. That's where I can see where our jacket's all mangled up on our, on our regular old 357 Magnum round. So I would say this is doing pretty good for what it's designed to do. Most people don't understand what it's designed to do. This is kind of what it's designed to do. You know, if you have to shoot through a windshield, car door, or anything like that, it's it's still going to be a hard-hitting, full-weight bullet after it goes through that. So let me shoot at some steel and just kind of see what we get. All right, 25 yards from the target. Let me see what I can do with this 357 SIG. See how it feels for me. Center mass.
just as I suspected. You know, when they load ammo like this, a lot of people like to complain. They're like, oh, they loaded that one a lot lower than its potential. But when you actually look at what they're doing, they're loading it to a level where it's going to give the best accuracy in a duty situation. And that's what I'm seeing with this. I'm not even really trying that hard, and those are hitting center. You know, typical 357 SIG, I'm not that accurate with, so. 357 mag, let's see what I can do with this. Oh, yeah. All right, I pulled a couple there to the left. I think that's just me. Let me go for a headshot. Uh, See if I can make that. So I think, you know, this is just as accurate. It's just the, you know, it's a little bit harder to, to go from shooting an auto to shooting a revolver and not pull it a little bit. So considering these are as accurate as, as they are, I want to back it up to 75 yards, do some really serious shooting with this and just kind of see if I can make some hits on target. All right, 75 yards from the target. I'm gonna do my best to place these shots. And I sometimes get a lot of flack from people like, why are you shooting at 75 yards? That's murder. You could never defend yourself at that distance. And they're kind of envisioning some guy with a knife at 75 yards. Be like, come on, buddy, and I'm shooting them. And they're not realizing what we're actually training for here is, you know, this is like half of a Walmart parking lot. What if you saw some guy out there with a rifle shooting people? You're the concealed carrier. You have a chance to take that shot. Why wouldn't you? And that's kind of where we're, we're coming out with this. And, and that's just kind of an example. It's kind of ridiculous, but you get what I'm saying here. So 75 yards, 357 SIG. See what I can do with this. See if I make any hits. I pulled that one. All right, so I didn't do that well. Um, the hits I made, I was aiming a little bit low um, just because when I first started shooting, I was missing. So let's see if the 357 Magnum does any better. A lot of people say, well, why don't you shoot single axe and you'll be more accurate. And I'm actually not because the way I'm gripping this gun, I'm getting my my hand on this and getting this real deep in there. I'm getting a good, you know, finger position. And when I go single axe and I'm loosening everything up to cock that hammer, and then I'm setting my finger on here lighter, and that will actually, you know, I might get one accurate shot, but the follow-up shot, it's going to loosen everything back up and I have to start all over again. As where if I get my hand in there, and I go double action, I can keep my hand position. So for me, it's more accurate. So Let's see what I can get here. Again, a little bit high. Um, and these are nickel plated casings, so they ejected just fine. They work really great with a speed loader. All right, so I had some misses because I was pretty much just popping them off. But overall, when we saw it 25 yards here, and we're not really taking my skill into consideration here, where you know anybody can make a shot at 25 yards, they seemed like they were hitting really, really well in the center. And when we back it up here, I'm getting kind of fatigued and kind of second guess myself if I can make those hits and I start pulling the shots. And that's really what all we're seeing with that. Um, but they were impacting just a tad high at 75 yards. So. Overall, though, I think this is probably one of the better rounds for 357 mag and 357 sig. A lot of people will test stuff like this, and I'll be like, "Oh, look at the energy of that 357 sig. It's only you know 500 foot pounds. It ain't like 800, which is the potential." And they're not realizing that the the whole point of that is to get within that perfect zone that we're looking for. You know, we're looking to get expansion, but we're also looking to not get over penetration after going through something hard. To impact that target and not get over penetration. We're looking for something that's very shootable. So there's been a lot of time put into developing ammo like this, and they've come out with a pretty good product. In my opinion, that's really good ammo. So that's what you get today with our 357 mag versus 357 sig and our Hornady critical duty. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.